much enga mana, enga reo, enga rangatira tanga, tēnā koto katoa. So greetings to everybody in Māori, which is the indigenous language of Aotearoa, New Zealand, my birthplace. And I started with that because the kind of sustainable models that indigenous peoples have been living for centuries are now being recognised as very critical and integral to the notions of inclusivity that we've been talking about the past couple of days. And thank you for highlighting just how important it is for governments to realize the critical centrality of sustainability. And I would even go further and argue now of regenerative education. So I'm going to report on the session that we ran in collaboration with Paul Srivastaya. And we looked at capacity, we looked at content, and we looked at collaboration. We know from the brilliant paper that Gary and others have written that capacity is a really serious issue. But with the systems that we have now, with AI and with digital enhanced learning, and as we talked about the personal personalized pedagogies that were raised in the papers, we really can make an exponential difference. And we saw this as universities pivoted during the pandemic. The university where Julie Wrigley has her center actually has increased its reach considerably post pandemic. And so I think we also need to look at the opportunities that these kinds of crises can afford us. Now, in terms of content, sustainability, Back in 2003, the Global Institute of Sustainability was first created, and there are now over 500 around the world. We know two from the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals in 2015, and the world's first ever globally agreed development agenda. And indeed, I was ambassador to the United Nations at the time. And while the Sustainable Development Goals are not perfect, it did represent a successful multilateral process which created a common language. And that is the common language I think that we all need to be using to create content. Collaboration is the new issue too. And it's not just collaboration between universities, although it's wonderful to know that that is so strong, but it's also collaboration between a range of perhaps unexpected partners. We do expect universities to be providing the right kind of input for those who are going to be our future leaders. And we at ASU have a commitment that every single graduate will graduate with sustainability competency. So some of the other things that are really critical is this notion of inclusivity. Our charter says we judge ourselves and our success not by who we exclude, but by whom we include. And that is really important when we consider that there are still some 700 million who don't even have basic literacy. The concept of innovation has been well covered and I love these new words, nimbility, uh, that Fernando used and diversity and innovation as an absolute strength. We talked about regenerative futures in our session too, because so much damage has been done to our poor planet that sustainability is no longer enough. We know we need to be thinking in terms now of circular economy, of drawdown, whether that be nature-based solutions or technological solutions. And without an integral knowledge of that, given the existential crisis that climate change represents, we are not going to have a safe future. And having just returned from COP26 and noting that the largest single grouping were fossil fuel lobbyists at some over 500. The points that you've just made about the importance of our being able to influence the private sector and governments for better outcomes could not come at a more timely moment. And universities really need to step into this void of global governance and the irresponsibility of the private sector. So, for me, a couple of points of radical collaboration, I'd like to give examples. First of all, a, a very new approach launched last year, the Global Futures Laboratory at ASU, which brings together 
a range of different disciplines. It is decidedly and determinedly transdisciplinary. So the idea is that the arts and the sciences must collaborate. Uh, it is hard to do, but it is a journey. And it's a journey I think all universities need to be on now. So within that, there's the discovery space of learning and how it is that we can bring that learning to a broader audience. And I'll just give one example. Two months ago, one of our scientists mapped for the first time the world's global tropical shallow coral reefs for the first time ever, which now allows us to analyze the oceans and the buffer zones that are provided in, in uh, relation to climate change, as well as coral reef restoration. So some of these very interesting big research projects and linking those through radical partnership, it includes Natural Geographic, the Allen Coral Atlas, to name a few, bringing those to a broader audience of policymakers and seeing how that can really influence outcomes. So another partnership that we have as we take that discovery through into learning is with the Interparliamentary Union, 179 countries, parliamentarians who are not necessarily well versed in the sustainable development goals and providing them short educative pieces to show them how to meet their obligations. We know every country reports on progress under the sustainable development goals every year. So you'll see a link to some of that training and an idea of how that can be carried forward to educate a broader audience. Other groups like the International Science Council, the Nobel Foundation, the International University Climate Alliance. How is it that we can bring together a group of unlikely and radical partnerships so that higher education is able to influence right across the board? And I'll finish with one last example, which is the We Empower UN SDG Challenge launched by the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, and by the President of the World Bank, along with the Council of Women World Leaders at the UN General Assembly with a range of universities, encouraging women entrepreneurs, given all the systemic barriers that still exist, to become solutionaries. And for those solutions to be taken up in partnership by universities, the UN, the World Bank, and indeed the private sector. So just to, to sum up the critical importance of sustainability and going beyond sustainability to regenerative futures the importance of addressing capacity of higher learning and through that means of personalized pedagogy, individual learning and lifelong learning. We've just opened a center at ASU for retirees who want to continue to be lifelong learners on campus. And then the content, making sure that that content is absolutely relevant as Francisco just said. And then collaboration. How do we make sure that through radical collaboration, we as universities are influencing the future agenda and what I hope will become the regenerative development goals.